Uh, right, so uh, welcome to today's episode of Britalia Live. I'm really excited to have um, Christian Webb of the Webb Brothers with us t uh, today. Hello, Christian. How are you? I'm I'm great. I'm great. Uh, in Melbourne, it's the middle of the winter here, so it's the uh, uh, it's freezing. I mean, I absolutely freezing. <laughs> I don't think, think when people think of Australia, they're like, "Oh, it's freezing," but yeah, <laughs> it's freezing. Oh, crikey! Well, not right. al almost freezing. I'm just like windy, cold, like Scotland on a really bad winter day. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, crikey! Well, we got we got the hot weather here in London. It's like touching. Um, you know, it's going to be like in the mid 30s and stuff like that over here, which is which is unheard of. Anyway, uh, Christian, it's really brilliant to see you, and we we're we're obviously here to talk about this exciting news about uh, Maroon, your uh, second album, I think, but. Um, just wanted to know, you know, obviously we're here, we are in 2022, uh, and there was a point when um, you, you released Maroon, and I, I, I went to see you um, at a number of gigs, uh, like with the magic numbers, I remember, and then it seemed like you dropped out, dropped out of sight, and I wondered what, what, what happened there. And we're talking about 2003, 2004, I think, aren't we? Well, I, I mean, uh, um, well, you, you were mentioning that you had read that post I, I had uh, written about, about 9 yeah. 11. Uh, yeah. And what I've realized, you know, 20 years later is that that day that a lot changed uh, just for the industry. And it's it's not one thing, but it's a lot of things. Uh, one is you had the digital revolution just starting to take root with Napster and things like this uh, and piracy. And, and so, and then on top of that, uh, you know, when that happened, bands couldn't travel. So if you, and for instance, I had a single coming out the very next day in, in, in New York City. <laughs> I was supposed to be there on 9-11. So all of that got canceled and uh, a lot of labels folded in the next six months because, so, uh, uh, and then it was just the general, let people buy less physical products. So um, although we were like very, doing, our career was at a point where we were doing well and, and we were one of the first bands that were affected by label drops and stuff. We, we did make another record for Warner. I yeah. do feel like artsy bands like us that were on major labels, that that moment in music and in, in the industry had passed. You know? Yeah. They weren't out there looking for the next radio head anymore. They, they weren't necessarily going to nurture the Web Brothers as the next Flaming Lips uh, for three albums. They, it was just a moment that uh, they, they weren't really willing to invest in anymore um mm. uh, and i think that sort of even goes with Britpop sort of folding up then and it, it's just a new era of dj music and stuff that's cheaper to produce and uh you know i mean people don't, people don't realize that like you listen to maria that album is three hundred thousand pound album to create you know that's a yeah yeah Massive that's production lot. with the yeah. best musicians available in britain that the strings and horns and all that stuff so um it's just uh, times economic, were changing. Yeah. Economic reality, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Christian, what, what do you think about the? Uh, so, let's just pause on that for a minute about the the digital. And here we are, you know, and we're deep into that world. And I mean, I even not I notice people people of the magnitude of like David Crosby saying that he he earns about you know he put a thing up saying I I earn about five dollars from um, all my recordings from uh, you know one of the download services. Mm -hmm. And um, therefore, you know, you have to sort of go live. But of course, he's got a big pull, I assume, so he can still sort of earn a living. Is that, is that kind of how the music business is now? You have to make well, it. Well, you know, uh, of course, I, I can see it in my family from my dad's perspective. Yeah. He has some massive songs that he earns shit on really uh, digitally, you know, yeah. especially as a songwriter. If you don't own the, if you're not like a copyright holder for the master, you're really at a disadvantage for collecting royalties. So, um, you know, you're at the mercy of, of those people. You get, uh, yeah. It's like a trickle down economic effect. And, and the songwriter's yeah. at the very bottom of that pyramid. And so, um, uh, and then, for, but I also feel like it, it's sort of an exciting time for artists, especially if you have a little bit, even a little bit of a cult following like Web Brothers. Uh, yeah. It's an exciting time because there's also this revolution going on in physical products, and uh, and that is that younger generations and people that grew up without it have figured out that maybe digital isn't the best way to consume your music. And they look back at it very nostalgically, and people say, 
well, why are more records selling every year? Like CDs, uh, vinyl, it's all making a comeback now. And it's because uh, it's a more personal way to listen to your music. And it's uh, easy, it's a more, uh, it's a nicer way to share it with your friends and to look at it. And, uh, and it's a more just artistic way to present music. Uh, so I think you'll see that continue. And you'll see these parallel business models where you have artists like me what are very anti-streaming, trying to use the beast against itself, maybe streaming one song to promote Maroon, you know? Yeah, yeah. That nobody's heard before. But but if you want to hear the rest, you know, you're going to have to, to buy those records. And then I get to decide when's, when's the time to stream the stuff or when I'm not going to stream the stuff. I, I feel like artists really make a mistake when they just put out a record and stream it up. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. they're really losing the value of the music, and they're cheating themselves of the hours that they put into to the work. So yeah, yeah, most artists are not going to have uh, a million streams of their record. But the, the the real truth is is that it's so cheap now to make vinyl to make CDs uh, that if you could, if, even if you could just sell a couple of thousand copies of vinyl, all that money is going to you yeah very beneficial man it's a lot it's not yeah. i'm not saying it's it's i'm not saying it's going to make you rich but it is going to support you absolutely so um, um yeah, yeah people need uh to concentrate on the physical product and make a really beautiful artistic uh and thing that people really want you know uh yeah. that, that there has to be demand supply and demand that can't be just release something and then hope that somebody uh, wants it. You have to create a desire uh, for what you do, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sort yeah of I've got, that's the way I look I've got a mate who, um, a younger mate who's, who's sort of late twenties and he, he, he only buys vinyl. He doesn't, he, you know, he, he really chooses carefully what he buys because he, you know, he hasn't got that much money, but when he does get a record, he buys a record and he just loves it. He loves the whole thing, the, the object itself, the artwork. And, but really, um, listens to the music in a different sort of way. He, he tells me this, you know, I don't, it, when music is streamed, it's like wallpaper. But when you put a knob thing on a record player and you've listened to it, you've heard a track from it and you really know that album. Um, uh, well, I know yeah, for me, uh, uh, um, as, as I've gotten older, I, I, it wasn't that I was very uh, into vinyl at, uh, at the time. We All our stuff came out on vinyl. Now I'm getting, I'm getting more into it and more into it as I get older, and and see, but just uh, the idea that um, that artwork is was so like that's the one thing that I think people are realizing is is missing these days is that yeah we did very album oriented rock and the artwork we created was so like such a big part of our success yeah yeah, you yeah. Know, uh, beyond the biosphere with the, us in the jetpacks and, and like just yeah. creating like a crazy images like that uh, and yeah. uh, back then everybody before they listen to your music they're going to see that yeah and it's not just like a little thumbnail on the screen it's a it's, it's a sizable piece of art that people either are attracted yeah. to or they're uh, appalled by or you know uh, <laughs> don't want anything to do with it uh, uh but the point is is that that whole aspect of of, of uh, the business is is sorely lacking now you know nobody yeah, yeah. Nobody's going to listen to something because of the way you're presenting uh, your image or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I understand there's videos and stuff, but um, but I'm just I wonder why uh, you know physical sales are taking off to such a degree, and I think it's because people want to hold it and look at it. And, uh, yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Christian, so, so let's 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 br to bring us on to Maroon then. So so that's going to be a physical release. Is that right? It's going to be. You know, I was so originally when when I, what what I wanted to do is what a lot of bands wanted to do. I wanted to do we wanted to do a twentieth anniversary uh, release uh, for that, and it's very actually hard to do uh, to negotiate with these record labels. And uh, originally we're going to do it through a third party, but as as time went by, we realized we might have just as much success uh, starting a little company to release our our records and maybe some of my dads and maybe some of our friends and we'll see where that goes but this is our first project yeah. uh yeah to to just sell directly uh you know um i'm gonna sort of let the cat out of the bag here this is a kickstart you know because we have uh 
great friends at Kickstarter and we really like we feel like it's the most it's the way to preserve the, the artistic yeah, yeah. integrity of this uh uh so that's the way uh it's gonna be done and uh uh so uh the vinyl is a two it's a two vinyl uh version of of, of the record and the second is all the b-sides and all the rare stuff from that period uh are going to be on that uh you know that second record so there's about 14 16 songs on, on the second record and then on the CD version, there's a third uh, CD uh, in addition that will be just all a ton of music that the Web Brothers did in Los Angeles uh, when we lived there. So, um, wow, you know, so if you get that one, so there will probably be, uh, I haven't decided the exact uh, track listing yet, but it's probably going to be about 17, 18 tracks, uh, like a whole, and and then we're considering uh, making that available on vinyl too. So it's a big. <laughs> It's a big yeah, yeah. release of music, the biggest release of music ever in the history of the Web Brothers. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. So well, yeah. I think, I, probably I think, uh, probably twenty five songs that have never been released before. Yeah. Crikey! Oh, right, right, yeah, yeah. that would be super, uh, yeah, super exciting for your fans. The the Kickstarter is such a brilliant um, thing. I mean, I've, I've supported a few Kickstarter things. I know that people really like it because you get a direct connection, don't you, with with the artist, and uh, which is really good. Well, you know, uh, my friend Thomas Negevin, he's a, he has a, an art gallery and he's the one that really uh, turned me on to uh, Kickstarter and he's been advising me on this release uh, and he's uh, just had so much success with it and it gives you yeah. so much freedom, you know, because yeah. uh, uh, it's freedom to really uh, do what you want, you know, and that's why we're able, like, I, I feel like since the first time since we did, like, Beyond the Biosphere, it's had, like, complete creative control over yeah. our stuff, you know? Yeah, it's very yeah. liberating. So I, I, I'm excited and I'm, I'm, we'll see how, how it goes, but we would love to do it again. If it goes well, we'll do it again and maybe even help some other people do it too. So, yeah. You know, we're talking about doing one with my dad. You know? so oh, wow. Cool. Fantastic. Yeah. What was the, what was the last collaboration with uh, dad? And we, we should talk about dad, shouldn't we, uh, in, in a minute, but um, is it was it the cotton... Uh, Cottonwood Farm, farm yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, same. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, that was like it was such a healing experience because uh, it really brought, brought the family together. We've never done any anything like that uh, before, and uh, you know, it was funny because my friend Joe Cassidy, who I was just we, we were talking about before we went on air. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, my producer friend who was in the yeah. band Butterfly Child and the Assassins and. Uh, he was involved with that project too. He did some uh, a lot of the production on that and mixing. Yeah. Uh, so uh, it was just it was really uh, and there's a couple uh, tunes on that that I feel are defi definitive versions of, of the songs. Cottonwood Farm itself, that song that we did with my dad, it's, it's pretty awesome, you know. And then yeah. the Highwayman song, the uh, the Web Brothers uh, Jimmy Webb version, it's just I love it, you know, because it's so cool to. Hear a song about reincarnation, uh, sung one one verse by each member of the family. It's just kind of cool, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's that's pretty. I mean, uh, it intrigues me how that working relationship must be because. Uh, uh, can we just talk about Jimmy Webb? You know, let's talk about Jimmy Webb for a minute. Um, just this massive figure in 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 music, written for everybody. You know, I think of his stuff for Glen Campbell. It's particular some of my favorite stuff ever and Linda Ronstadt and Art Garfunkel and Up, Up and Away and Wichita Line. Yeah. And it's just the list goes on, doesn't it? I mean, it's such a force of creativity. Uh, how was it? I don't know. Where, where do we start? Was it, you know, growing up with, with that? Has that, would that um, have been? Well, you know, I mean, that's one of the reasons that I started writing these Web Brothers stories on my, uh, on the web page was to tell some of these crazy stories, right? So one of the first ones I told was my dad, working on the animals Christmas, right? Which is this crazy piece of music he wrote uh, in the early eighties. And I was just yeah. a little boy, uh, but he, he dragged me into it. And I'd be, uh, <laughs> it was really my first experience in the music business uh, or or with a serious music project, you know? And uh, yeah. so, yeah, I've been, uh, I think uh, when you grow up around that, that sort of success and, and, and that, 
also the people around him, the Harry Nielsen, Linda Ronstadt, these sorts of people are around. You go, oh, this is normal. And these people, um, <laughs> they're having the success. And, and some of them are just like, I'm not going to mention any anything I'm, uh, that was going on. But let's just say the behavior was like, it wasn't normal, you know? Like yeah. there were substances being consumed and things being done that you wouldn't see in a normal American household. And so you're exposed to a lot of, uh, as a kid that maybe uh, I wouldn't, I, I certainly wouldn't expose it to my kids, but it was a different time in the seventies. We had to be more open-minded about not holding different generations to the standards of now, you know? Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. I try to be conscious of that, but, <laughs> but, but still, um, uh, it just, it definitely fueled my interest in being in music, but I also think it, it gave me an unrealistic uh, idea of, uh, you know, how, yeah. <laughs> what your chances are of actually attaining that success, you know? Yeah. Um, and to be honest, when you're the child of someone with that success, it's smaller. Like the, su the success we had as the Web Brothers, it's remarkable. <laughs> if you really like yeah. uh, look at, Look at what uh, other people have done. You know, it's it's very yeah. rare. You know, there's a couple of cases where there's big big success, but um, it's a tough road. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> really. And, and let's talk about that because you're on Facebook. If you follow the Web Brothers page on Facebook, you're you're doing these stories, these backgrounds to different songs, and telling different points of your your hist band history, yeah. aren't you? In that sort of way. Um, so. Well, I I, I mean, for for me, it's. Uh, I'm experimenting uh, with the idea that first of all, we, we haven't put out a record in a while, so it's like okay, let's let's try a, a new form of getting the word out about this kick, uh, the Kickstarter or the release yeah. uh, that is a little unorthodox. And I'm a, I, I consider myself a pretty good writer, and I thought, hey, the worst thing that can happen if I do this is I'll be, become a better writer. Yeah, you know, I'll be a better writer. Uh, I'll sell some records. Uh, and I thought maybe it would be uh, if, if it was anywhere else, but my but my web page would be like, oh, who cares? Nobody cares that Chris is doing this. But you know, I, it's my page, so there are actually a few people that do care. So um, yeah, yeah. I, I I've been really surprised by how many people have signed up for the Maroon uh, mailing list. Yeah, yeah. From yeah. the stories, you know, it's been remarkable. Yeah, so it's been worth doing, and uh, and I've really enjoyed it. And I think I'm gonna continue blogging. Uh, when the Maroon Project's done, you know, um, maybe maybe in a broader way, just let's talk about uh, Chicago in the 90s, or let's talk about London at the height of the uh, Britpop Festival years. I was there, I saw it all, so like, I, I can write about these things, I can I can talk yeah, about yeah. it. And, and I was not only, uh, you know, witnessing it, but I was participating in it and, 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 and have loads of funny stories about all yeah. stuff, you know. so, uh, I mean, I, I remember a seeing... lot of nostalgia right now, I think, because a lot of these seminal records are coming up for their big uh, anniversaries and stuff, right? So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of talk, uh, just like there was a few years ago about the 80s, now it's the 90s, right? Everyone wants to talk about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Ecstasy and the Wild Festivals, and uh, um, yeah, the return of melodic rock and, and basically the last hurrah of rock and roll, right? I mean, the last hurrah. Of rock yeah. and roll. That's really yeah. what we're talking. About. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I remember seeing. Yeah, I remember seeing you on um, Jules Holland on British TV yeah. on Jules Holland. Yeah, right at the beginning of the two thousands or end of the nineteen nineties. That was. Uh, yeah, it must have been amazing. Uh, for us, um, so obviously with the, we go on on that show. Uh, we are the youngest kids there, and. Even though, like, we're not that young anymore, you know. <laughs> like, I'm 27, <laughs> Justin's 25. We're not, we're not kids, but obviously, it's just the poise and the, and the, you know, this was not something that any of uh, the people that were on there had hadn't done before many times. So, but it was our first time on a big time. Yeah, we were nervous, you know. Um, but we did well. I'm really proud of those performances. We were actually thinking to see if we can get them uh, enhanced on the. CD just so that the, there was something, yeah, you know, some some video involved in the project. But um, it was so cool to see uh, Katie Lang play, and in a weird way, I think of her like Linda Ronstadt uh, because they're people that put the song first. 
Yeah, absolutely. it's always about singing a great song and doing it to perfection and yeah. and be, doing the best version of that song and not doing a song if it's not going to be the best version of the song and yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, being very uh um Meticulous particular and... about it. Yeah. Um, yeah 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 I always remember that because my friend Julian Coriel uh, um who's the son of uh, the, the guitarist Larry Coriel the the jazz guitarist. Uh, he did us a solid favor and came and played a bunch of uh, that that TV show and a bunch of shows with us on bass, you know. And it was just a uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was just an old childhood friend that was building out on bass uh, that day for us, and uh, it was a really so glad to be him because he's so he's so good, you know. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Gave us the confidence to, to do a good show. <laughs> And so before we talk about sort of future plans, um, I um, you posted a thing about My Myla, your sister Myla, doing some music. So I sort of looked looked at that. And you know, I I I know it's it's interesting. It's funny because of course there's almost twenty years between an age difference between me and my sister, right? So I'm the oldest, and she's the youngest, and uh, six my brothers and sisters, and they're all from the same parents. But uh, so. Uh, yeah, I mean, I know like she, like she's been pretty low key about the music. I know she's only releasing on like cassette tapes and, and stuff. It's very, uh, uh, but the music's great. Uh, but uh, I, yeah, I think it is. you are starting to see this with uh, younger artists, and, and especially if they've been around other other people and seen seen how things work, they're just more reluctant to uh, to put things out there streaming and more interested in having smaller group of people that are more into their music buying it buying the physical copies and yeah and have and retaining more control and i don't i'm not saying that's what she's doing but i can tell you that it's not she's not streaming it widely you know um, no no absolutely uh, uh, intentional so, um, yeah yeah so christian yeah. tell us so you, you've mentioned a little bit about uh, so you you might go into the um helping other artists as well i, I was talking to my brother justin about this that if because we were really dare I say, uh, post-punk sort of Chicago bar guys that were really into Guided by Voices and Super Furry Animals, maybe a couple of the indie bands from Britain, but we were not in the mood to sign to a record, a major label record label, you know, at that time. And I, I, I honestly think that if we had the tools that we have now uh, to set to to print up records ourselves inexpensively, to communicate with our fan base and, and and to send records directly to them through something like Kickstarter. I don't, I'm just not sure that we would have chosen to go down that major label route. And yeah. and, and I'm not, I don't regret it. There was no alternative at that time to get no. our music out there, but I just don't, I, I, I don't know if that route is so appealing anymore to anyone. No. <laughs> I just, yeah. I, what no. is a, I don't know what the big, uh, I'm trying to think what a record label could do for us that we can't do for ourselves, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you are. Nice. You know, yeah. I, if there's one thing I've learned in my life is don't get ahead of your skis, you know? So I'm just, I, I, I've got two little kids. Uh, I've got a wonderful land uh, here. Uh, my wife, uh, Rachel, is in the music business too and uh, works for Frontier Touring here and we get to see all, you know, she works uh, marketing, just amazing shows and bands and I get to be a part of that and I uh, I just gonna do one one project at a time. I, I will say that the next thing we I do I, I'd like to do something with my dad. So I'm really trying to to figure out what that is. And yeah. we've got a few different ideas, but uh, I think after the maroon issue, uh, we will yeah do something similar. Uh, hopefully uh, with a direct a direct uh, campaign. Uh, it, with my dad and something we work on together and it's time to do that and um so yeah I'm looking forward to that and then beyond that yeah yeah uh, we'll see what, what we do you know <laughs> yeah brilliant that's absolutely fantastic watch this space christian thank you so much for your time today it's absolutely brilliant thank you very oh, much thank you man thanks so much <laughs> <laughs> cheers cheers Oh
gave me life And how she made it in Some build it morning when I'm straight Flowers blowing on a hill Dragonflies and How she gave me life and How she made it in Some velvet morning when I'm straight Flowers are the things we know Secrets are the things we go She made